course. Welcome back to Two Balls and a Mic. We're going to go ahead and start this week with another great interview looking into the 2022 San Diego Loyal season. You know him. You love him. San Diego really loves him. You can go ahead and say that he's pretty much the powerhouse of the team. Este bato no se cansa. He doesn't get tired. He is the king of Fresno. Please welcome Mr. Elijah Martin. How are you, Mr. Elijah? Perfect. So, all right, man. Like, you know, um, we've been seeing you around San Diego uh, in the last couple years. We've gotten familiar with you, yourself, your play style, and and everything that you've, you know, given for, for the city, man. And, and as somebody who uh, loves the city of San Diego, uh, and you are somebody who pretty much loves the city of Fresno, so almost the same uh, love for that city. Uh, thank you for everything that you've done. Uh, love, sweat, and tears has gone, <clears throat> you know, has not gone unnoticed. Um, uh, so again, from San Diego to, 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 to youth, appreciate the hard work and dedication that you put in and out. Because a lot of people, they may not have the chance to see what goes down in trainings. I've been privileged enough to see what goes down in some of these trainings. And I don't know how you're not tired by the end <laughs> and just coming into the games. How do you do it, Elijah? Uh, well, first of all, I, I want to thank you for the kind words that, that really means a lot to me and, 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 you know, and to go out on the field and to battle for, you know, for San Diego, but not only, um, not only that, but just San Diego loyal. And you have, you know, a, a group that believes in you, a group that wants you, you know, to be, you know, honestly the best that you could possibly be and that, you know, it just makes it that much easier to go out on the pitch and to, you know, and to fight for your, fight for your safety, fight for your club, fight for your manager. So it's, uh, uh, thank you for those kind words. No, no, ge genuinely, genuinely. I mean, it's it's been a wacky couple of years, especially in, in the in the sports world and in the world in general, man. Um, yeah. But uh, it's it's been impressive uh, what I've been able to 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 see these professional athletes, including Elijah, do is is not easy, right? I mean, to have uh, a couple years where you're just locked down and you have to do, you know, from what I understand, uh, beginning of the pandemic, there was a lot of Zoom workouts and a lot of you know just. How is that? I mean, how different is that from, you know, say, obviously a regular preseason and whatnot, but just doing some of those extracurriculars in that way, how, how did that change your mentality? Uh, if anything, because there was no sports, I mean, it, 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 it made me personally more hungry uh, to get better, but it just made me more appreciative of just the work that we get to do because, you know, in a snap of a finger, you know, in a quick snap, all sports was taken away from us. Uh, and that was obviously something that nobody has ever experienced. So, so mentally, of course it was challenging and, you know, being away from family is also, is also a challenge, you know, during that time. Uh, but, but, you know, to have, you know, to have the resources and, and the creativity that, you know, that our team has had when it comes to, you know, still making sure that we get our trainings in and still making sure that every guy is, you know, at, at the best level that he could possibly be obviously due to the circumstances. It was an experience that that I don't want to go through again, but <laughs> but it was uh, uh, I'm happy I went through it though because it only made me mentally stronger. So Elijah, you go from Zoom workouts to actually getting to train with the team, and then having the first official game ever at at Toro Stadium with the team, and you get to experience that with a lot of people, and then everything just kind of stops, and the season just you have <laughs> to play out the season in a different way with no fans. How was that like for you? Again, that was one of those experiences that I'm, I'm I'm happy I went through, but I don't want to go through it again. Um, and that, I mean, I think that for me, it was it was it was a big uh, eye opener. Uh, obviously, everyone knows how much fans mean uh, to the game of football, but you really got a got a massive um, a massive understanding of, of of how much you know the supporters truly truly mean to uh, you know to a club and and and. You know what our fan base does. Our fan base makes it really hard for other teams to come, you know, to our home. And and with there being no fans, like it's kind of it's kind of a fifty fifty ball game at that point. You know, we don't really have we don't really have our twelfth man uh, out there. But again, it was like I said, it was one of those experiences that I'm happy I went through it because again, it just makes me more appreciative of the things that we actually have. 
Uh, but again, nothing that I want to go through again. Fortunately, we did have fans a little bit more normal in this last season, and man, did they come out! Chavos, locals, Rainbow Loyals, everybody—it's everybody who you know who wanted to be out there, and some people that you know just being open to not only San Diego Loyal but the sport of soccer. Uh, just you know, just got the city got captivated from uh, the work that you guys were doing on there. Do you guys feel that magic? Like, like, what does it feel like to start a team? Like, you've literally started and been a founding member of, of, of something special here in San Diego. Um, is that different from, you know, obviously making, and eventually we'll get to it, just joining uh, the ranks of uh, Galaxy 2, where it's just, a little bit more established. But what does it mean to for you personally to be like, you know, pretty much like X-Men, first class, right? Like, you know, you're – you're one of the first generation of, of so- professional soccer here in San Diego. And that, and, and that was something that was thought about when I first joined San Diego was, was not only having the ability to play for uh, the ability and the opportunity to play for Landon Donovan, but at the same time being a part of a new franchise and, 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 you know, being the, you know, being the first to kind of, you know, set, you know, set the, set the expectations, set the standards and, and and all that played in mind and, and all that was special to me. And um yeah, I mean with Fresno, I was there the second year, so there was still some uh I still felt like I was part of, you know, the one of the first few guys, of course. But I think I think for me it's kind of cool to experience just the hiccups that, that may happen, but at the same time you, you, you also understand you also understand that it's uh you know, it's 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 the first couple of years of, of the club existing and and to see the mark that San Diego has has even made within the first two years, uh, uh, you know, should be a prime example uh, of just kind of what this club has done and 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 how hard they've worked, you know, even behind the scenes uh, to make sure that we're in the position that we're in today. So for me, it's been nothing but grateful and 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 it's been really cool to see up close and personal. And you mean you bring up Landon Donovan, so. What is something for uh, after working with Landon after a couple of years now? Was something that you have taken from watching him and learning from him uh, as a defender? Now, what is something that you kind of like learn from him? And going forward, let's put some respect on Elijah's forward play oh, because yeah. he, One, he yeah. like the skills that that come out sometimes of Elijah. I don't know how he has the legs for it. Then he moves forward. I mean, again, not to take anything away from the defensive skill of Mr. Martin here, but but yes that's a good question but let, mm-hmm. let's 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 talk about also the offensive play and what he may have learned from Landon right? yeah with i mean with what Landon does with all of his players and, and something that i can really appreciate is that he really instills confidence into into everyone and 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 everyone knows that in order to be consistent and everyone knows in order to you know to to, to, to have consistent good games you know you it's real nice having someone you know behind you letting you make mistakes letting you uh, a fail at the time of time, but knowing that eventually you will get it, and when you get it, you're going to consistently get it. So, so, so the biggest thing for me is, 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 uh, you know, Landon really instills confidence into his players, and and he's a manager there. You know, he's a manager that I want to fight for, and and that just goes to show just, just, you know, just how well he uh, he, he handles, uh, you know, just player personnel, and and um, yeah, that yeah, I would just say that just the confidence that he instills into, into his players is uh, is something that really highlights for me. Have you taken on him on one on one? Like, have you seen that killer instinct from the reports that I've been <laughs> getting? Sometimes, like he still has it and he turns it on, and and you can tell that that yep, that's Landon Donovan, all right. Yeah, for him, it's like a light switch. I don't I don't understand how he could just flip it on, flip it off. Uh, of course, you know it'd be fun to obviously play against him a few times and. I don't think I've had the opportunity. I think maybe once, either once or twice out of uh, out of my two years being here. But uh, sometimes he'll lace the boots up, and you just see just just uh, maybe the movement isn't as fast, but you can tell that his thinking hasn't changed, and uh, he's always thinking a few plays ahead. And and I think for someone of his caliber, you know that never goes away. And, and it's nice again being up close and personal, being able to see stuff like that. And you know, just one piece, obviously, you know. It's a it's a huge piece. Landon Donovan, part of San Diego Loyal, but if, but you know he's not on the pitch. He's not the ones that is that are running up and down during game time. It's 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 really is a, a, a genuinely a team sport, obviously. But a lot of the positive things that came out of, of the camp, obviously through the accounts and and then through play, is that you guys have a really strong core of individuals 
not only professionally, but personally. Um, could you tell me, like, maybe who were some of your go-to guys in the squad last year uh, and, and maybe share a, a story or two, some behind the scenes, something that the cameras didn't catch? Uh, you know, who were the buddies? Who were the, who were the culprits? I mean, I mean, I'm someone that I like. I don't like to be, like, like locked down, you know, to one group or to one uh, individual on the team. I, I'm usually the one that tries to bounce from, you know, different personnels to different personnels, just just – just trying to just understand and know my teammates as best as I can. And, and for me, I enjoy that. Um, uh, you know, I would say last year, you know, you know, I really, I actually really grew close to the young ones, like CJ, Xavi, uh, Ian, you know, I, I, I really grew close to them. And, and, and I think for me, it was just more so because um, I just wanted to set, you know, just a, just a, a small example uh, uh of how I feel like, you know, you know, ways to be professional and whatnot. And not only that, but, but, but when it comes to a mentality as well, too, I, you know, those were two or three people that I actually really, you know, became close to, uh, as well as Miguel Ibarra. He was someone that, you know, that looked out for me, uh, in many, 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 many ways. I mean, he was my neighbor. So, I mean, he, he was already, uh, <laughs> he was already in my face a lot, but, but yeah. Those are, you know, those are, those are a few guys. But again, I'm someone that I like to bounce from, from everywhere in the locker room and, and feel everyone's vibes and, and and we go from there. Now, Elijah, this is a debate we've had with some some friend of ours that are also from Fresno and have lived up there. And I'm assuming you've gotten out to eat in different in many places here in San Diego uh, with your teammates. But the question is right now. Are Fresno tacos really better than San Diego tacos? Let me, let me preface this. Sorry, you, Elijah. Sorry, I'm sorry, Elijah. <laughs> In talking about, you know, these great CJ, Xavi, I went to a to training over at Hilltop uh, High School, and uh, our friends, our sponsors, uh, Tacos El Vaquero, are actually catering. Yes. Um, and uh, I'm sure Elijah had some of those tacos, and uh, and he had, so, he had yeah, he knows he, the before he knew that uh, there were, uh, you know, sponsors, he was very honest and said, no, no, wow. just no. Elijah, what's going on with Fresno? Yeah, what, what, is what, about what is there about their tacos? Que man? pasa, que pasa? I mean, you gotta experience it for yourself. It's one of those things that I can't tell you how good it is until you actually understand and taste it. That's how that's how you understand it. But for me, I might be a little biased. Obviously, I'm from Fresno, so that's you know, I'm 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 always gonna show Fresno love. But I'm not saying San Diego tacos are bad because they're because they're bomb. They're All bomb. Right. All right, I'll take that. Well, we're gonna but have to. I, but but I'm gonna stick with Fresno because that's just what I mean. That's what I grew up on. It's in my blood. Like I, I can't I can't say no to that. We're going to have to take you and some of the players, and we owe everyone a trip down to the motherland in yeah. TJ, of the motherland <laughs> of tacos. Yeah, no, we talked with Metcalf last year, and we're like, yeah, once this pandemic is over, we're definitely going to go down there. And I think, yeah. uh, I think uh, Charlie, too. A couple, couple of players are already mm -hmm. on this on this caravan, so you're – you're welcome. We're welcome to come, Elijah. So we'll we'll, we'll show we'll you. We'll rent out a van. We'll I'll take note of that. I'll take note of that. <laughs> um. But you know, again, a, a lot of positive vibes that, that come out of there. Is there is there kind of a um, a story or a locker room story that just kind of unified everybody? Just um, a, a day that just galvanized everybody to to maybe help help you guys go on that nine game unbeaten run, which was impressive in the middle of the season. And you know, certain certain moments throughout the season that you know, just San Diego Loyal put their stamp on the USL championship. Yeah, I'm, uh, I mean, it's kind of hard to. To pick one thing that that kind of um, you know sets us up for that or, or whatnot. I just think that maybe it's just it's just the mentality that you know that our head coaches or that, or that I had well that all of our coaches instill in us and and uh, showing up to training a certain way, training a certain way, and obviously if you train a certain way that that that, that transfers over to the game and and uh, obviously obviously with football it's you know sometimes it goes your way, sometimes it doesn't, and and you know last year we had a few ups and downs, but but, you know, I, I, I just really feel like it's just the mentality that's instilled in us. And, and um, you know, you, you know, that was just, you know, we had a good run, at, at, you know, in, in, the, in the middle of the season with that nine game on being streak. But, um, but yeah, it, 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 it starts in training, honestly, it starts in training. But from the first thing to the last thing you do. So I know throughout the season injuries happen, right? And and maybe Landon has to ask from from you or other players to play in a different position that you're normally used to. How, I know sometimes you have to play right back, sometimes a little higher up uh, on the left mid position. How 
difficult or easy is that for you to just play wherever Landon asked you to play? Because it seemed easy. Because you just were. I mean, you were killing it as a right back as well. I appreciate that. No, I. Uh, I mean, growing up, I played. I played right back. Uh, 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 dominantly. Um. Uh, obviously, at times I would be switched to you know the left back. But but I, but I've been fully you know I've been fully confident, especially with the confidence that they give me. Uh, to be put in any position and to make sure that I know my job and I know my uh, responsibilities and, and I know how to, I've learned to, you know, to really excel in those and to really try to be as consistent as I, as I can in those. Um, again, but also I'm someone that, that I'm always up for the task. I'm, uh, you know, for me, it's always, you know, I just want the PT and I just want uh, to get on the field and, 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 you know, help my teammates in the base, in the best way that I can. And, I mean, again, playing everywhere where he was asked. I remember a particular game. I was fortunate enough, again, to be part of those um, games with no fans. And I, I can't remember exactly what game it was. It was a game where, you know, Elijah was spent, like, you know, gassed. Obviously, you know, you, you have back-to-back-to-back games, I believe. And he was like, you know what? It, 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 obviously, for the betterment of the team, hey, just asked for a sub, but he was asked by Landon and Nate, Stay on there. Stay on there for a couple of two minutes. Hold on. Give me 10 more minutes. Lasted the rest of the game. Like, that's that's the type of player that, that you have here at Santan Diego. Somebody that's going to give their all. Also, you know, talking about right back, left back, everywhere on the field, you might even find Elijah Martin in the box sometimes. Here's Ibarra. <laughs> Able to play this one ahead. The attempted ball in front comes back out. Elijah Martin to goal. Score! <laughs> Two nothing, Sandy. Elijah Commentate, Martin. The commentary does commentary not do justice poor. there, man. It is piss poor. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's but, okay. But you know what? The goal counted, and 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 it should have been celebrated. You know, if it was at home, they, everybody would have gone wild. The locals on 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 road trip went wild. You were at that game, right? Uh, yes, yes, yes. You were yes, at that was. game, so every, everybody went buck wild. I know there's That's some history, well. so I mean. Take us through that moment. What are you doing in the middle of the box in the uh, 41st <laughs> minute when you're up 1-0? Just extra bit, a bit of confidence? No, uh, uh, again, there's a certain system that, you know, that Landon and Nate, um, you know, really implies uh, in trainings. And and um, at that moment, at that time, it called for me to be in a certain position. And and obviously, obviously, there's a whole lot of work that had to be done for the ball to even get there. So, you know, it, it wasn't just me, obviously, putting the ball in the back of the net. I, I just happened to be in the right spot. That was, you know, to me laying it back exactly where it needed to be. And, 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 and you know, Guido making that hard first post run that, draw, that you know, that draws some defenders out. And uh, I, I just think that there's details within that, that even things like that um, uh, is emphasized on the training pitch. And to see it happen the way it happened, um, it's more of a better team goal than it is my goal. It's, it's funny, uh, when you played that clip, it said, yellow card, Grant Stoneman. Do you guys ever call out Stoneman for getting so many yellow cards? Yeah, we call out Stoneman for getting yellow cards. <laughs> okay. I, was, I always wondered, because, I mean, everyone calls him Mr. Yellow Card himself. Yeah, now, no, so. 100%. I mean, no, but, I, I, you know, Stoneman plays his heart out. Stoneman will put his body on the line. Obviously, sometimes it, it, it's maybe uh, maybe a bit be too, it, it might be a too aggressive at, at times, but um but his work ethic and 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 his performance should never be questioned because he's always he's always doing what he needs to be doing he, i just think sometimes he gets unfortunate uh <laughs> the ref i think the refs now have a you know have his name written down on a list prior to a game so i mean who knows hopefully uh hopefully they let they let they uh they let off my boy this year well, what was the stat like he gets a yellow card every it was a it was like every f- Seven every point seventy five games he gets a yellow oh, card like, like it's, yeah. it's some wild stat like that, um, but again you need that enforcer right you need that so that that guy to you know lay lay the law down and and he lays it down both ways he he's not afraid to yell at his goalkeeper to to, to talk to him and um, in that defense is there a time for coherence was, was did you guys just click all together because again you were there for the majority of the time Yarrow went down with the injury at some point Stone and missed a couple of games. Um, you how play, hard you played with both uh, Trey Muse and Austin and when you started? Austin. Yeah, how, how was navigating those those waters? Um, I think a lot of that, a lot of that also was done not only on the pitch but outside of the pitch. Um, you know, building that chemistry. Uh, you know, and also at the same time, everybody has to be ready and paying attention because um, you know if someone's not in the lineup, they still have to be paying attention on. On 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 what their role may possibly be if they were put in, and 
maybe it might be this position, maybe it might be another position. But so it's really important that you pay attention, um, you know, to what's going on in trainings, um, whether you're on the 11 or whether you're not. And, and so because of how, again, because of how demanding it was in that sense of, of, of making sure you're always on top of what you need to do. And, you know, whenever guys would come in and out, of course, you know, it may have its challenges at times, but, um, but that's why we train, you know, we train to, you know, you know, for situations that uh, might make us uncomfortable. So we, uh, I think at times we did well, obviously, like, again, I said, at times it, it's, it's, it's a hurdle that you have to get over. Um, but, but I would say for the most part, we did, uh, we did a pretty good job when people came in and out of the lineups, especially in the back four, once injuries came. Uh, who, who would you say someone in the team, uh, again, again, you guys spent all this time together during training and you get to see everyone play. Who do you think someone that maybe is a little underrated that he doesn't get enough, like the attention that he deserves. Enough uh, love. Yeah. yeah. Enough love. If, like, who is that player that comes to mind? Shoot. I would say all 20 of us. <laughs> <laughs> That's my answer. All 20 yeah, of us or, or however many is on the roster. Uh, all of us, I think, um, uh, you know, I think for how much time we put in and, 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 you know, how, you know, how much, uh, you know, we, we really focus on just certain details of the game and, and, you know, and how often, you know, the club, you know, is, is able to break down the game to us and try to make it as simple as possible. And, um, I remember last year there, there being a time where, uh, for, honestly, for me, it, it was, it, it was one of the best goals if not the best goal we scored. And, and, and the reason why I say that is because it was straight from the practice uh, pitch. Um, it was a, it was a goal kick, uh, played out wide left, uh, play, played over the top, played back to the middle to Guido, and then slipped Douglas in. And it was like four or five passes from the back all the way to the front. And for me, it's, it's, it, it's, 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 it's moments like those where, where, you know, I don't, I don't really see too many teams doing that, uh, especially for how quick we did it. And, and I mean, again, it was like four or five passes that we made that, that opportunity happened and, and we finished with the goal. So, um, yeah, I would say all of us are just underrated, especially when we're pulling off things like that. I, I, I know, yeah, we know exactly the goal you're talking about. And, and it was one of those goals where every part came together. You can see the, 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 you know, people talk about set pieces where, oh, right off the training ground, that play that you're talking about where mm -hmm. it just, it's the epitome of, of what the, what Nate Miller was probably happy for the first time this season, <laughs> just because it actually happened. Like he, he, he wants to in practices uh, over at the Olympic training center, but yeah, no, that, that was the philosophy going in the play style of San Diego loyal was that play. And it came out a really crucial time too. I, I remember, and, and you know, it was it, it's it's not a it's not a chilena, it's not a overhead kick, it's not a you know whatever robana. It, it, that was sound, beautiful soccer, and and it was goal. and it was just just every pass was like perfect, and and to top it off with the perfect through ball that Guido had to Douglas, like that. I mean, it it, could, it couldn't have been better than that, uh, and that's and that's that, that's a goal. Even I feel like down the road, you know, that I'll, I'll even still remember just because of how nice and, and uh, I obviously actually being a part of it within the training session and then seeing it come to life is it's, it's for me, that's a special moment. Yeah. Well, that was against Sacramento, right? If I'm not mistaken. I believe so. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was against Sacramento. That, that yeah, one, looking, man, I remember, I think I, I got to go to that game and just seeing that play build up from right behind, I usually stand behind the goal or like somewhere around there and just seeing that develop and then getting home and seeing the whole play from like the actual like snap. I was like, holy yeah. shit. Like, <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. Like this is what my team does right here, man. Yeah, yeah man. Uh, so, I mean, now we're getting like you guys made that run and you guys made the playoffs. Uh, obviously, like it didn't go as we expected or as we hoped, but what was that locker room conversation after the tough loss against San Antonio and what was the morale on the team and how is it something that Landon said, all right, you know, this is how we're going to overcome this. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, of course, after the game, um, I think it's safe to say that we were all like mentally drained, mentally, uh, yeah, you know, mentally defeated. 
um, obviously because you work so hard to get to a certain point and then to fall short, I mean, it never feels good. Um, and obviously with that being the end of our season, the, you know, um, there's not really much to say. Um, but I think that's also a time that Landon also reminded us, which I really appreciate. He reminded us of just, of just don't, don't let this game, um, uh, define our season or, or, uh, uh, uh in a sense of like there was so much work that was put in this year and 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 don't let that be you know be a waste and and know that you came in and you know and 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 did your jobs and and sometimes things go away sometimes things don't um but yeah obviously obviously there was there was a few things said after after the after the game but i would say that a lot of us uh, especially me i was pretty mentally drained and 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 I didn't really want to. I mean, obviously losing like that, I didn't want to. I didn't want to play anymore. Like far as that year, and and just, I just wanted to just get soccer off my mind. And and luckily this off season, I was able to do that. And you know, and uh, you know, restart my focus. And 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 now I'm even hungrier than than what I would last year. And you know, in short conversations that I've had with you, Elijah, that's something that's been primordial for you throughout, right? Mental fitness, as long as well as uh, physical fitness, and it's right. it's it's just as important. And um, what are some of the things that you do to disconnect from soccer? I mean, because sometimes you know, obviously, soccer players are they're people; they have their own yeah. interests outside of exactly. soccer. Like it, it, some people, some soccer players, it's like. Well, it's a job. Some people don't even like soccer, and they're like, I'm just good at it. But what are some things that you do, Elijah, to kind of get your mind off of that? Like, what, what's 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 Zen Elijah away from soccer like? Uh, Zen Elijah, I would say, is, is is really talking to my family, talking to my friends, uh, talking to my lady. Um, you know, there's so many things to talk about uh, uh, with them, and other than soccer, sometimes I don't even want to talk about or hear about soccer because that's all I talk about. Um, or, or that, or, I'll, you know, I'll play games with my friends, um, do that, or, uh, just throw the music on and go for a walk or, I don't, I don't, I mean, each day it might be something different. I wouldn't say I have like a set thing that I do. Uh, if there's a set thing that I, if there's one set thing, I guess would, I guess be just talking to my family and friends, uh, um, and just, and just detaching in that way and, and just hearing more from them and instead of me talking about my soccer, uh, you know, as always. Well, what, what's on your playlist right now when you go for one of those walks? What, what's the go-to playlist? Nice. It, depends, uh, it, it, it changes. There's so many artists I'm listening to right now. From, um, yeah, I don't want to give away my secrets. I don't give away my <laughs> secrets. Uh, very Nate Miller-ish, for my, might I say. He's touching as a thing or two. <laughs> I don't want to give away my secrets. Austin post. They asked him, "What's the playlist for Barcada?" And he posted his playlist. Have you made it out to Bridge Barcada? Have you heard of them? Them the guys out there. I know you've met Paul uh, and his of family. Of course, of course, yeah. But but I haven't been to because uh, they play pickup soccer, right? Yeah, yeah. And I and I haven't been there. I would love to see it, but I, I haven't been there because I see them on 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 social media and, and and especially Paul when he posts. Like I yeah, I see all of it. I just never been able to go over there. So, you know, obviously talking about a difficult end of the season, disconnecting, but as you may know, as uh, written by the great Garrett Richards on the USL page, Elijah, not only are you the king of uh, Fresno, you are the comeback king. A fantastic article uh, written uh, here on the USL Championship page. I give it a, a, a good read because, again, it's very important information. Talks about Elijah and uh, I talk him as he's not here. Uh, <laughs> sorry, uh, you know about his his journey essentially into being a professional soccer player and the pitfalls and and everything you've had to go through. So uh, obviously you went through it, so I won't put you through it. But I do want to <laughs> say this image right here. <laughs> First of all, you are Arthur aficionado, or are you doing it for the memes? Second of all. I'm doing it what, for the memes, yeah. <laughs> what, 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 what's the meaning right there? Because again, are you you're just locked and loaded? Are you just gonna turn it on, right there? Uh, nah, it was just it was like I don't know, like uh, you know, I was just thinking to myself that, um, uh, you know, I, I feel like as an athlete, um, no matter what you do in life, I think you're always gonna ask if if there's more that you can do or or if there's better that you can do and. And 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 I had one of those moments where obviously I just self reflect and and you know think about just you know just certain things and and 
for me, I, for me, it, it was just, it was, I need to come harder. I need to come, you know, I need to, I need to come for respect. And that's the first thing that came to my mind. And obviously you see in the picture, my hands kind of balled up. So I thought it'd be a little funny to throw the, <laughs> the Arthur meme on there to make it not like too, too serious, but serious enough. I'm glad that you said you did it for the meme because this guy right here is the biggest Arthur fan you've made. <laughs> like this guy knows the episodes by heart, by and heart. It, it's annoying sometimes. There was an Arthur episode where that's love. That, that that is love. Don't let him take that away from you. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Chiva. What's wrong with you? There was actually an Arthur episode where they play soccer and they don't know anything about a soccer so much so that the guy the, they're coaching the ball was yeah. inside of the area, right? The kid steps outside of the lines, and the guy's like, that's out of bounds because you stepped outside. That's not how soccer works. That's basketball. Like, hey, sorry. Um, terrible soccer it. episode representation <laughs> of it. Um, but, I, you know, in, 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 in growing up, obviously, you know, you're able to just turn that off, and it's almost, you know, nece nece necessary to turn it off for yourself for, for, for your own sake, essentially. But growing up, why soccer, right? Like, were you just around it? Were you just, you know – enthralled by it did you watch a game or two you're like i want to do that how did how did you just fall into the sport where in a time where you were growing up you know it wasn't as big as it is right now where you have academies here academies there you know there's just pick up games it's, it's great right well so for me like like i'm actually well i'm actually at the age where where well i was at the age where when i started playing uh well at club ball uh, that's when that's when they had the academy, uh, but obviously as a youth, all the way on until U 13s I played rec ball. Um, my dad was my coach. My dad was was the one that introduced me to soccer, and and he would just I I just remember every day he was just turning on um, he was on Ronaldinho, and I would just watch the Barca games, and and I think just watching Barcelona made me fall in love with soccer, and then obviously I tried it out for myself and. I happen to be, you know, a, a decent at no, you know at a young age, and um, there was a time when my dad actually made me choose. <laughs> you know, he was like either baseball or soccer, um, just for certain circumstances. Uh, you know, call for that, and obviously I I, I chose soccer, and and uh, but my dad also, and which I appreciate, my dad really made sure at a young age that that I knew what commitment was, and and and. And maybe if I didn't like it one day, you know, you know, I, I, he wanted me to, you know, stick to my commitment of, of playing a full year. And, and um, um, I just remember as a youth, there was some, there was some years that were, uh, <laughs> that was really fun. And there was some years that I, that I just didn't want to play at all. But, um, but I remember telling myself that I was committed to getting better and committed to, you know, to this game. And uh, I, I continue to watch Barcelona, only Barcelona and, and yeah, then and, and that's just how my love, have, have, you know, has grown. And uh, but yeah, my dad installed it, you know, into me. And 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 ever since then, uh, what you fourteen, you fifteen, that's when I started playing uh, academy. Well, I was, it was like a DP, like a developmental player, is what they call it. But I still play club ball, uh, for Odyssey, and obviously the rest is history from there. So it's uh, it's safe to say that you're a Barcelona fan. Uh. Kind of, yeah. Oh, so who, who's, who's your team? If you like, I, go, like I don't really have a team. I'm not like a diehard like like fan of a team. I just mm -hmm. love good football. So obviously, I love watching Man City right now and the way they play, especially Man City. Yeah, no, yeah. exactly. I mean, I mean, I mean yeah. as a Chelsea and a Man U supporter, we we also get to see <laughs> how good those sport. guys are. Yeah. <laughs> and um, great football is great football. Exactly. Great football is great football, and that's how I view it. I I wish I was a diehard fan to a to, you know to to a club, but. Well, I mean, they're right here. There's always space for the right European Man champions, Chelsea. Uh, but I'm a fan of the of, of of Man United, so I can't I can't do that. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so so growing up, man. Um, I mean, I like to ask. You know, we've had the privilege of having a couple of players on. What's a a play or a goal that you remember early on? Could have been like you know when you were 10, 11, 14, wh whenever it was. Like the greatest play that no one saw. Like that play that, you know, you remember that goal that, oh, my God, I can't believe I scored that for like 20 people, 10 people or, or whatever. The one that, you know, just comes to mind right now. What, what, what's that play for you? Uh, I mean, when I was younger, I, I, I had a really hard shot. Uh, so I remember scoring a few goals. From, it was honestly, I don't even know how I scored it, but I, I was at half field. It was a free kick. And I just shot it on goal and scored. Uh, but I don't know if it's because 
keep it too short at that time because because once you hit a certain age, no matter how tall or big you are, and you're still using like the big size goals. So it was a bit easier to put them in, you know, you know, top corner. But that's the first thing that comes to my mind is a few goals that I scored at at, at half field as a. I'm talking like this is like this is like you 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 tw- like not like you 14s, you 15s. I, I like to ask Tony all the time. He's a goalkeeper, uh, as you may know. Maybe potentially could he's looking for a one day contract with Sandy Oloyo. You know Shannon McMillan? She couldn't score on me. Just saying, World Cup winner. <laughs> no, he's eventually. I put some more respect on Shannon. <laughs> True. No, 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 she was not happy about about that, me saying that after the game. So she's coming for me. I'm 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 a little scared. Like I full faith in Shannon's skills. <laughs> out of five free kicks from Elijah, how many do you think you can block? Oh, I don't know how good uh, Elijah uh, fancies himself at free kicks. Do I have a competent wall? I mean, is it a regulation okay, size? Okay, PKs, PKs. PKs? One. I don't think you block any. One out of five? One out of five. I, I mean, I think that's that's a, that's a win for me, right? You know, I'm I'm not a fit guy, per se. It's a, you it's you a can score goal. five PKs on him, right? We well, love him to show up to training. Look at this. I mean, I, I'm always <laughs> there. They never let me on. <laughs> you know what? Let's, let, let's get that happening. Uh, I'm, I'm down for that. Um if I escort, if I stop one, I win, right? Right. Hey, there's gonna be new faces at training that don't know who you are. True. With that being said, true. Lots of new faces this season. Who are you looking forward to getting to know each other, or, or maybe playing uh, with some of the new defenders as well? Yeah, personally, for me, I'm I'm looking forward to you know to, to everyone coming in. You know, it, it, it's because obviously everyone wants to come in, and everyone wants to contribute to the team as best as they can. So um, maybe get a you know get another you know. We still have the same core of uh, players uh, here, you know, with us, and, and um, having this, having a few additions that we are having, it just makes me excited, you know, just how uh, we all gonna help each other, uh, you know, reach this ultimate goal, and that's winning your club championship. I mean, and honestly, like the fact that now we get to see and we're experienced with like what type of competition is out there, and the fact that I'm sorry, but Orange County winning. Like on it, like that has to be a chip on, on, on the shoulder, right? Like that, I, I feel personally, I don't want to put words in people's mouth, but I feel like that should have been San Diego loyal spot. Obviously things didn't happen the way that they should have. And, and some people got lucky here and there, but uh, is that a chip on your shoulder? Is that a matchup you guys are looking forward to next season? Uh, I mean, for me, there's not really one matchup that I'm looking forward to. It's, 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 it's all of them. It's, it's, it's having a consistent season. It's, um, um, going on a run again of consistent wins, maybe not only not not only being undefeated, but consistent wins, and um, that's my focus. And again, I'm not I'm not really I don't really have anyone underlined on the calendar. Um, obviously, there's some exciting games, but 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 they're all exciting, and 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 they're all opportunities for us to show the true quality of of the of players that we have, but the true true quality of club that we have. Just- oh. Go for it. So Elijah, I'm sorry, but you're clearly a fan favorite for a lot of people here in San Diego. And you have people like Travis who have you as their lock screen. And you have <laughs> yes. people like Paul that, that his son looks up to you and you're his favorite player of all time. How how much fuel does that give you when you when you go on the field, when you start training? How does that motivate you? Uh you know, I'm very grateful for the love that San Diego has showed and 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 it's it's all all of course, it's something that for me goes a long way, and um, you know, it, it's it's Paul actually. He he had won a contest uh, that I was having uh, for, for for an E3 shirt, um, so I thought it'd be really cool if I just go and I just personally de- you know deliver it to him, and and I actually had the opportunity to you know to you know talk to him a bit, actually get to know him, and uh, I met his lovely wife and his lovely kid, and and. Uh, I'm happy his kid remembers uh, the you know our little knuckle explosion. That makes me happy because it's uh, hopefully that's a little mark that I you know that I left in you know in the youth brain of of, of someone that's positive and um, you know someone that leaves it all you know on the field and and but but again I'm I'm super grateful for the support that San Diego showed me and 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 um, obviously again that to speak back to what we we're talking about earlier it just makes it that much easier to go on the field and to fight for your club fight for your city because of uh, you know, just all the love that show not only me, but you know, to everyone, um, you know that you know that suits up and and represents the city. 
Have you picked up any Spanish? I know, you know, Fresno is not too far away. And, and you know, there's a lot of uh, Latin community up there, especially in the, in the soccer world. And again, from that uh, uh, amazing article, uh, Elijah, there was a period of time when he went on a tear and destroyed every single Sunday league. Just just not giving him a chance. Uh, how was that like? Do you do you have Spanish in there? You know, dame la, hey, güey, como está? Hey, sh- I know, like, very, yeah, yeah, I know, like, very basic like that when it comes, like, on the soccer field, but um, I still need to get better, and 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 I and I plan on getting a lot better 2022 on just you know just 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 learning more about my roots and 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 as well as um, you know hopefully develop some Spanish uh, to have a conversation with a few people. I mean, you'll get to practice it with Keko uh, now joining Coke. the team. Coke. I so see you got. Uh, you- uh, <laughs> different type of Spanish. Yeah, di- very different. You know, they got Fresno tacos, San Diego tacos, Spanish, Spain Spanish, <laughs> Mexican Spanish. Same but different. Same but different. Exactly. I heard the, the food in Spain is not the best. Uh, no, uh, meat is fantastic. Yeah, and, okay. and I'm like, you know, just not that I've been there, but yeah, I mean, just yeah. <laughs> what they say. Yeah. What What are some of your favorite spots here in San Diego? I mean, obviously tacos we were talking about uh, uh, nonstop, but. What are some of your sp- favorite sites? Have you been and you know had a chance to get out and explore San Diego a little bit? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I've had a chance. Um, it's hard for me to like point like point just one or two out. Um, I'm a big ramen fan. I'm a I'm a massive ramen fan. There's yep. this place. Um, what street is it on? Is it on? Um, I can I don't I don't. Is it off of Third Street? I believe. Mm-hmm. And uh, next to Imperial. I, th- I think I'm correct, but it's called Naruto, and it's 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 on Third Avenue in Chula Vista. There we go. Oh, oh man, that's whoa. my favorite we're, spot. We're dude. talking about Izakaya Naruto. Yes. There it goes. <laughs> uh-huh. Man, that Gogo Godzilla rose. Fire. <laughs> Chula Vista spicy ramen. Mm. Yes. That's the one I get right there. Spicy yeah. ramen. Oh yeah, man. You know what? Sometimes I'll throw this. a nice little nice little sushi roll in there just to. Top it off off the night. <sighs> Screw the tacos. We're going there, bro. <laughs> it's done. It's done. I love it. Uh, ramen is one of my favorite favorite of all time, and and uh, th- that's actually that's actually a place that I found when I first first got here. Uh, my mom and my sister had 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 helped me move in uh, for the first time, and and you know over there in San over there in that part of Chula Vista, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, my mom asked you know what I wanted to eat, and I and I went on Yelp and I found it, saw it had good ratings. Showed up, had it, and never forgot about it. Man, that's my hood right there, man. I live like two, three blocks away from there. You straight oh, up. That's right. That's right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I like it. it. South Bay. South um, Bay, Chula Vista, man. You know the place is good when they close for like a good stretch of time in the middle of the day. Oh. And then they open later like at six. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, that, that for the longest time before the pandemic, there was no such thing as delivery. Like, they were like, no they delivery. They didn't have delivery. They yeah. did not deliver. But, you know, obviously things change, but. Yeah. Um, Shout out, shout out, Izakaya Naruto. Oh yeah, yeah, get him as a sponsor. <laughs> did uh, did you just did you have you always like ramen or is this just kind of like a, the upgrade? You know, I mean, I love you know, Maruchan grew Maru-chan. up on it, obviously, but not comparing. But you know that you know you, you it's elevated, yeah. right? Yeah. You just is that like one of your top top uh, foods? And how did you get land on ramen? Yeah, so uh, every winter break, um, obviously it's the off season for us, and so it's the off season for a lot of clubs. Um, you know, I have friends that play overseas, friends that, you know, close friends that, uh, that play within the United States, but obviously aren't nowhere near California. Uh, so, so my friends and I make it a priority that every winter break we get together, whether it be in LA for X amount of days or, or, or whatnot, but, but that's our time to really enjoy, uh, you know, each other and, and, you know, and get away from soccer and, and just, and just worry about each other and, 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 and how one's been and whatnot. Because obviously you have those conversations over the phone, but it's a lot better having those in person. So um, on one of those trips that we've had, I think it was about two years ago, we were in L.A. and, 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 and my friend, um, you know, he, he, he's a massive ramen, ramen, ramen fanatic. And, uh, and he just pulled up to a place one day and I tried it for the first time. I was very skeptical, but I, was, I tried it and... It, I, 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 ever since then, I've been hooked. It's not a bad thing yeah. to be hooked on, honestly. Straight up. So, I mean, Elijah, obviously, as we kind of wrap this interview up, we don't want to take too much of your time, but big news from the team moving on from Adidas and having a new partnership with uh, Charlie. I don't know how familiar you are with the kit, but how excited are you to see what those uniforms are going to look like? Have you seen them? 
Can you tell us anything? You can't, obviously. Yeah, I don't want to get you in trouble. Please don't. I haven't seen him, and even if I did, I, I saw the interview with Andrew. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, but, Ricardo might have had a thought or two about that. I saw him at open tryouts. He's like, hey, that was a great interview with uh, Andrew. I you probably should have prepped. We should have, should have prepped him more a little bit. Just going in. But it's okay. He didn't give too much away. Go watch yeah. the interview. But hey, How thank, excited. thank you for watching that, Elijah. Appreciate that. How excited <laughs> are you to see those uniforms? I know Charlie's known to drop some very, very impressive kits. So yeah. how excited are you? No, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited. And, uh, um, you know, I've, always, I've never worn uh, a Charlie brand. Uh, I don't own any Charlie brand, so it's it's you know for me it's 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 again it's one of those experiences that I get to uh, be a part of and uh, and again that should speak for just uh, the club in general being you know it's third year we're well, going on this third year and uh, and you know making history such as uh, you know having a sponsorship such as Charlie um, and 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 again I'm as grateful as I am to you know you know to to you know to wear the jerseys and. And to see how how nice they're going to be, I'm it's, I'm I'm also grateful to be part of a club that uh, uh, can make moves like that. And honestly, like we we are happy to have that move, especially you know like being Mexican, it's a Mexican brand. Chatley's trying to expand into the U.S., so um, it's a great first move, especially here next to Tijuana. Is 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 it's almost a no brainer. Like you know, like we told Andrew, like dude, good job. Um, <laughs> I have seen one. So I'll say that wow, Elijah Martin's gonna look fantastic with that number three, uh, on his on his back in that in that kit. Um, but one last question, Elijah, before we turn you loose. Uh, usually we ask uh, about a golden ticket, which is you know if you had a golden t- t- ticket to go to a any sporting event in the past, where would you go? You can go with that, or you can tell us what your favorite boot is, or both. It's up to you. What my favorite what is? What's your favorite boot? Soccer shoe, soccer cleat. Uh. If I had a golden ticket to go back to watch a match, it'd be when Barcelona came back on PSG, uh, Ooh, and, the, and the dramatic and the dramatic way yeah. that they did it, it, it for sure be that game, or uh, or um, I don't know what year it was, but Barcelona was playing uh, Chelsea, I believe, in the semifinals of Champions League, and this is when Iniesta scored uh, just a banger. Oh. I, oh. I believe I, I believe Michael Essien also scored Michael, the first yeah. goal. Or, if I if, if if I hope I said that properly. Yeah, but Michael Essie has scored a banger in that goal. And we were like, oh, it's gonna be great. Look at you in your highlighter yellow uniforms, Barcelona. Is, is that the game you guys got robbed? This is the disgrace. This is the disgrace. <laughs> <laughs> by. Yes, that game. That was a beautiful goal by Iniesta. Oh, yeah. Michael Ballack. Yeah. That was when Michael Ballack was still playing too. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. Michael Ballack got you know robbed of a Champions <laughs> League. It's okay. It's okay. That was a good match though. That's that's those Champion League nights, man. Those classic, get, classic looks. I gave two right there. Those, those two are are, are are ones that I really wish that I was there to witness and whatnot. Because even watching on TV, it was, I mean, just just stuff like that's emotional. Yep. Uh, you know, just how games play out is it's it, you know it's truly amazing. Um, but I can only imagine the emotions I would feel being there in person and uh, not only not only being there but repping my Barcelona. Yeah. I mean. Well. <laughs> well. Chelsea lost that one. So can't say much about that one. Yeah, Chelsea's gotten a couple of great goal scores. There was that one Ronaldinho outside the box where he's just standing and he's just oh, yeah. no no yeah. power. He just like kicks it and Czech just has no reaction to it. It, it. You know, those are some of the great great games in Barcelona. Usually won those. <laughs> uh, uh, do you have any thoughts on uh, your favorite boot by any chance? Just uh, going back in the archives. Yeah. See, I'm bad because I don't really know like names of boots. I just know them as like, like Nike Phantoms or Nike. I can't, I can't wear Vapors. I have a wide foot, and the Vapors is kind of, kind of narrow. Yeah, they're slim. Yeah, so, uh, those kind of hurt. But um, Tiempos are comfortable. My fa- I would say my my favorite boot was probably the Magistas. I don't think they make mm. those anymore. Uh, those and the CTRs. Okay. Those two yeah. are. are at least from Nike are, are are the most comfortable boot that I've that I've put on. Yeah, they, the the these, these signature right Iniesta shoe. Yeah, but I would get, I would. Those are like the like the newer versions. Mm, of the I know, yeah, I know which yeah. ones you're talking about. Yep, the old school ones. Yeah, you old, guys, old school cleats are better, man. 
and now these new cleats. I like the old ones better. Not like we're playing like every other week to that's be true. like <laughs> that's, this that's is actually very a true. tool that Elijah uses that's day in, true. day out. Don't uh, let him take that away from you. <laughs> I mean, I, I still rock my predators, so I get my, I got my kangaroo skins that are like <laughs> ten years old. They legal still, here? They're, they're not legal in California uh, anymore. Um, I thought it was illegal to sell them, but you could, have, but you could have them. Yeah, you yeah can so have you can them. have them. You can, you have, can them. have them, but if you want to buy them, not that I'm saying go do this, but go to Arizona. They're still selling them. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, we gave that no tip. <laughs> we gave that tidbit to uh, a- Abby Dahlkemper, part of the new San Diego Wave uh, here in San Diego. Do you have any thoughts on that, man? Like. You're gonna be in a play in the same city as like Alex Alex Morgan, man. Like just top talent. Like no, the talent it, in San Diego is crazy. Yeah, yeah. For there to be a team in San Diego, I mean, it, it's I mean, it's something that San Diego has been waiting for. You know, first, uh, you know, first they're just waiting for a professional soccer team, and then now, you, you know, now with the San Diego now having a, having a, a first division women's team and having a second division men's team, and um, I imagine I imagine the women's teams, the expectations that they're gonna have are. Are extremely high and through the roof, but not only for San Diego, but for women's soccer as a whole, it's 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 really nice to see. Obviously, another team, uh, 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 another franchise join, uh, same as Angel City. It's, it's it's you know it's nice to see that there's more opportunities for women uh, to continue to grow in this game. Um, that's I think that's the more important uh, part on it, and and I'm excited to see what San Diego brings uh, uh, to a city on the men's side and the women's side. Absolutely, Elijah. And again, I want to go ahead and say thank you for your time today because, you know, again, professional soccer player, I believe you had to be in the city by today. And, and things are going to ramp up really quickly, less than three weeks for preseason oh, yeah. to start against the Whitecaps. What, what's one last message you have for all the San Diego Loyal fans? Uh, one last message is um, is uh, I know we're all going to be ready. Um, I know we all maybe still have that bitter taste from last year, so... We're taking that little chip on our shoulder and, and we're coming the season and, and, and the goal is to be better, a lot better than what we were last year. I love that. Thank you, Elijah. We'll see you out there at Torero Stadium. Get your ticket to San Diego Loyal, uh, San Diego Loyal's website so you can see E3. Mr. Elijah Martin, never get tired on that field and just run up and down and play for you, San Diego. Thank you, Elijah. Do me a favor and just stick around. We're going to go ahead and just wrap it up real quick. But for everybody listening, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me.